There it is, peeps. We've all seen it. This is the latest, hottest training aid, Ericsson board, the e-board. Problem is, the real thing is $275. That's getting up there for a training aid. This could be yours for $40. Exactly like this, and possibly even less than 40 bucks. Let's build it. All right, boys and girls, here is the layout of the plane part. So, as you can see, this is a circle. <laughs> this is a piece from the big box stores. They have, an, they have this at all of them. It is 24 inch in diameter piece of wood for a small table or something by about an inch thick. Now, you could make this out of plywood if you wanted to, scrap piece, that would be even cheaper. But I chose this because it's perfect. It's dense, it's solid, and it's an inch thick. So there's a bit more depth there to router out some of it if that's the way you were gonna go. This can be made fancy way or a very basic way if you don't have many tools. So I'm going to make it the basic way because I know most people on this channel uh, don't necessarily have all the power tools, but you could also router some of this out, um, but we'll get into that later. So basically, what have I got? I got my tape measure and I set 10 inches across here. From, so just set zero there, hold the end there, find where the edge intersects 10 inches, whoosh, draw that line then find the middle point and then at a right angle to this line here draw a line all the way down it and then at this middle point at this point kind of somewhere here you need to find where 18 inches intersects it so get a square find where it's perpendicular here, but also nine inches on both sides and draw that line. Then connect the dots, connect the dots. And basically we are gonna cut out on this line, this line. We're gonna leave this beautiful curve at the bottom. I'll explain further. We might reuse the cutoff bit if we need more weight at the bottom and we could leave this but we might also cut it off I shall see anyway that is the beginning of the poor man's Ericsson board this thing by the way 21 bucks I think $21 like I said if you had some three quarter inch plywood probably Probably like a hardwood one to make it heavy enough but uh, then by all means use that and cut a similar shape out but that's what we're starting with all right so just cut out the shape there it is I use this little track that I made a circular saw and just, uh, you know, set it on the lines and then cut the pieces out. If you don't have one of these, you don't have one of these, you can use a handsaw. All right, just because I have one, I've rounded over the cut edges with my router, but if you don't have one of these, just, you know, sand them, hand sand them, just so they're not sharp. There you go. See a nice, nice bull nose on those. So if they catch anything, not gonna hurt. All right, moving on. So what I have here is a couple of slats inch and a half wide by half an inch thick 
18 inches long and then a piece of oak piece of oak that is two feet long so it's one by it's three quarter inch thick two and a half inches wide two foot long and this these three things are we're going to be used to set up the uh, mechanism that slides so you can adjust the length of this thing and also this piece of oak is going to get doubled up at the end to hold the handles in now that's going to be the most complicated part but basically this is kind of going to go down the middle these two bits on the side are going to create the channel for it to slide in and out of and there'll be kind of like an adjustable bolt that goes through the thickness of everything. But that's the next step. Now we're going to position our adjustable handle device. That's what I'm calling it. Okay, so that piece of oak that I showed you earlier, it was a two feet piece of oak. And you can see that I have cut off seven inches from it and I have glued that seven inches to double it up that is because this is the part sorry this is the part that the handles are going to fit into so we want a bit of extra thickness to uh, to make them strong so if the board goes like this the piece of oak is going to sit like that we don't want it to sit like that. We don't want these to stick out further than they have to. So it's going to sit like that. So that will be the shortest length. That will be the shortest length the handle can be. Or the adjustment device can be. And the other piece of just kind of slat that I bought is going to serve as the channel within which this is going to move up and down. Now, like I told you before, you could actually router out a channel in here if you had a router and do away with these. And this thing would be able to move up and down inside that channel. But if you don't have those tools, and a lot of people don't, this is how we're going to go. So I'm going to glue and tack nail all of these things into place. And then I will screw them in later for a bit more strength. Now, additionally, remember that cut off piece of wood from the circle? That is going to go here on the end. We're going to double up on the end here in order to create a bit more weight. That's right. You could do it like this, but it feels just a little bit light like that. It feels a bit better with a piece of wood like this on it. This piece of oak is going to move up and down. What we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole through this, through to the other side of the uh, plain board. And then we're going to have a bolt with an adjustable nut here. And then basically what we'll do is we'll have different holes in this so that you could, if you're a bit taller, you could adjust it like this or maybe like that for a really tall person. This here is about good for my height. So there we go. Everything is glued and pinned. As you can see, this just slides in and out of the groove like that. If, uh, if it's a bit tight, you want it to kind of be tight because you don't want much play in it, but if it's too tight, you can just put a bit of paste wax in there and it will slide up and down nicely. This um, ballast, if you want, if you will, this extra piece of hero weight, I'm not going to glue it, I'm just going to screw it just in case I want to remove it afterwards. Here is the adjustable handle I told you. 
going to use. Here's the type of bolt. Oh, there's any focus. Now, this is a stainless steel one. It doesn't have to be stainless steel. In fact, you could, you could even fix this. You don't even have to do this. You could save money. You could just do away with these rails, fix this at exactly the right length for you, a bit of trial and error, screwing and unscrewing. And then when you got the correct length, just glue and screw it. So you don't even have to do this. So that would save some money, be even cheaper. But I'm going all fancy. So stainless steel bolt, you see this is one of those bolts with like a bit of a square edge there. So this kind of like digs into the wood on the back side here and stops it from spinning and keeps it there. I might even, I don't know, I might even epoxy it into the hole. We shall see. But basically this is going to go in with a washer. This guy will be adjustable and uh, we'll be able to adjust it to various heights. So I'll get on with doing that and I'll show you what it looks like. So I've got three adjustment holes separated by two inches and the bolt goes from the back through to there. And just take this off, wash it off, lift this up, slide it down, put it back in, adjust the bolt. Now I know what you're going to ask. You're going to ask how long is this bolt? Well, this board here for me is one inch plus the three quarter inches of the oak, one and three quarters. This is two and a half. So I just got enough space there to thread this bolt. So use a size bolt. I've got a two and a half inch bolt. So use any size that suits your needs for the different thicknesses. And there we go. We are pretty much done except for the hardest part of all, the handles. Now, we're going to come to that because this is going to be the most challenging bit, but I have a way of making it easy for you. All right, now for the most difficult bit, the handles. So I'm using oak dowel, oak because it's very strong, and it's seven eighths of an inch. Why seven eighths? Well, seven eighths because I felt that if you just left it raw like this, it's like a golf grip. It sits nicely in the fingers. And if you wanted to wrap it with like a tennis type grip or something like that, so that it's uh, easier on your fingers, then it wouldn't be, it still wouldn't be too large to feel uncomfortable. So just like a golf grip, you can get this in your fingers. So seven eighths works about perfect but by all means do whatever you want to do so the trickiest bit is let me see if I can film this so the handles if like we're looking from the golfers view this is the bit that goes into the plane board then if this is the view you have then the bottom hand for a right-handed golfer it has to sit roughly at 45 degrees to the board that way and 45 degrees that way so that would be 90 degrees to the board and this is 45 so it's a compound angle 45 and 45 and the left hand let's see if I can get this to focus the left hand grip is a bit higher. I've got mine about three inches higher. That works about all right for my hands. If you have larger hands, you probably want to separate these two by a bit more. But same thing, it needs to go, so that's straight up and down. So it needs to go 45 degrees that way. But also, if this was straight, it needs to tilt 45 degrees that way. So essentially, as you're looking down the grip, both uh, handles are kind of going out away from you. So they're not straight in. They're going out away from you for a bit, 45. And they are tilted, splayed out 45 degrees as well. So a bit of layout. 
decide where the first handle is going to go. So the top handle, I've gone down two inches and the bottom handle, I've gone down four and a half. So I've actually got two and a half inches between those two. And when I place the handle like this, if you can see the edge, the bottom edge is about half an inch to three quarters away of an inch away from the edge here. So, oops. So if I place it like that and I kind of sight down, if I place it roughly at 45 degrees both ways and I sight down where the middle of the dowel is, the middle of the dowel ends up about here and about here. And those distances from the edge are about one inch, one inch. So the middle of the dowel is one inch in from the edges. Now, after we've done that, we need to draw our other 45. So get yourself a square or anything, cut off a piece of wood at 45 degrees. And through the middle of where the middle of the dowel is, draw a 45 that way. So if I look at it as the golfer's view, so for the top hand, you're gonna, for a right-handed golfer, for the top hand, draw a 45 going through that center spot, right to left going down. And then for the bottom hand, your right hand, for a right-hand golfer, through that spot, draw another line, left to right going down, right through the middle. That's gonna be our layout. Okay now, so like I said, this is part of the project that's probably going to freak a lot of people out. But having uh, done a bit of trial and error and tried to construct a jig uh, to drill these holes at an angle, uh, I found that actually freehanding it is the easiest way and really doesn't make... Um, creating a jig doesn't make any significant difference to the quality uh, of the outcome. So, I do say so a lot, I apologize. Um, you wanna lay out these holes. And as I explained before, these dowels are at like a compound angle. So they are, if this was 90 degrees, then it's 45 degrees that way. And if up and down, this was 90 degrees, it's 45 degrees that way. So the easiest way is lay out the middle of the dowel where you're gonna start drilling. Get yourself a very thin drill bit, eighth of an inch or something. Let's pretend this pen is it. And just drill down, straight down, maybe an eighth of an inch like that. Eighth of an inch down, just to start a pilot hole. Then you're gonna use something cut at a 45 degree angle something like this this is just an off cut of plywood with a 45 degree angle and you're just going to help yourself so put it on a bench so it's level put it on the bench so it's level with this so put something underneath here so it's level and then sighting down it line it up so line it up with that black line at 45 degrees there and line up the edge of it with the little hole for the middle of the dowel and then just freehand, imagine this is the drill bit, freehand down all the way through with your small drill bit. Then once you have a hole in there, future drill bits tend to want to follow that hole. So keep increasing the size of the drill bit. So go to a quarter of an inch all the way through. Just keep increasing until you get to the size of this dowel, which for me, as I said, is seven eighths of an inch. I'm sure there are, any, there are other ways of doing it, but I found that this is just the simplest way. Uh, you still end up with virtually exactly 45 degrees and it works just fine.
So I think that's the way to go to make it simple. And there we go, free-handed, almost. In fact, that one I went a bit too far, almost all the way through. You could go all the way through. I just like to have a little bit of resistance there for it popping out the other side, but deep holes virtually all the way through the inch and a half thick oak. Now we can glue them in. Dowels in, glued, drying. Simple as that. So um, let's talk a bit further about this. Uh, if I didn't mention already, I cut these dowel lengths to nine inches simply because I wanted to make sure they were long enough and I wasn't quite sure, you know, with my hand size, where, um, where the ideal length would be. So looking at it now, it looks like I've cut them a bit long, but Better long than too short. To start off with about nine inches, I think that will do for most people, and then you can cut them later on. Ta-da! <laughs> we just need to let this dry. Let's put it up against something. And there it is, my friends. All done for a fraction of that ridiculous price of the real McCoy your own e-board. I'll tidy it up a bit, cut the uh, handles to length, and then uh, we'll take some video using it when it's dry. Sweet!